Thanks for being here. Subscribe to Cheating Stories Best, so you don't miss new stories. Is intimacy with an actor more valuable than fidelity to your husband? Today's story with a similar plot. Enjoy it! My wife Abby loved going to the movies. If I wanted to make her happy, all I had to do was take her to a good movie. I couldn't just take her to any movie, it had to be in one of four categories, animation, action, adventure, drama, or romance. Abby also went to almost any movie that was with Tom Torino, Matt Wright, or Brad Talbot, they were her favorite actors. My first date with Abby was when I took her to see Sleepless in Seattle. She didn't really like Tom Hanks, but she loved the story. Years after we got married, she admitted that she fell in love with me after that movie. Why she did this, I have no idea. After 12 years of marriage, Abby is still a very beautiful woman, standing at 5 feet 6 inches tall and weighing 115 pounds. She has a magnificent figure, and her dark emerald green eyes really stand out against her raven hair. When Abby gets dressed to go out, she still turns men's heads in her direction. My name is John Sawyer, and I'm no slouch either. I'm 6 feet 1 inch and 180 pounds. I have sandy hair and blue eyes. Abby and I have been told many times that we make a great couple. During college, before I met my future wife, I never lacked female companionship. However, when I met Abby, I realized that I didn't want anyone else. For 12 years, I thought Abby felt the same way about me. We met in our first year and fell in love with each other. Our love grew during our four years at one of the state universities, and we got married three months after graduation. Abby is my true love, my soul, my everything. I couldn't imagine life without her. While we both love our two children to the core, it really has to be spontaneous when they're not around. Tonight was supposed to be just the two of us. We decided to go dancing with three other couples that evening. Since we had to stay out late and drink, we booked rooms in a hotel in the city center. My parents and I had agreed to take our two girls for the night, so it was going to be a really special night. It turned out to be something special, good, but not at all what I thought. When we got to the nightclub, I couldn't understand what was going on, but the mood seemed to have turned sour. The women seemed to be nervous about something, and one of the men seemed somehow smug. Of the three couples, I really liked George and Helen, and Bob and Anna. George was a software engineer, while Helen was a stay-at-home mom with three children. Bob owned his own plumbing company, and his wife worked in the office doing the bookkeeping. The only couple I didn't really like were Chad and Thelma. To tell you the truth, I had a good time with Thelma, but I thought Chad was a jerk. But Abby and Thelma were college roommates and remained good friends. So I had to put up with Chad. As far as I could understand, he had something to do with the film industry. I think Chad said he was an agent or something. From what I could gather, he was not very successful, but Thelma had a high-paying job as a pharmaceutical representative. I am a financial advisor at one of the major brokerage houses. When I first started in business, things were slow, but now I have more business than I want. The way it works with my firm is that once you reach a certain number of clients, the firm insists that you train someone and place a new consultant with your excess clients. Of course, you keep the most profitable clients for yourself. I've had to do this twice already, and I'm close to doing it again. I make a really good living. Abby began working as an administrative assistant for Mike Winston, executive vice president of a regional bank, when our two girls were born a year apart. Abby became a stay-at-home mom until Stacy, our youngest, entered first grade. Then one day, Mike called her and announced that he had been promoted to president, and he wondered if she would be interested in working for him part-time. Abby asked me, and I told her to go for it. If you think I made a mistake by letting Abby go back to work and now she's sleeping with her boss, you'd be completely wrong. Mike is 62 years old, bald, but more importantly, he is completely devoted to his wife and five children. Like I said, something was a little off, but I didn't know what it was, and at that moment, I didn't care. I was looking forward to an evening of dancing with my wife and a whole night of love afterward. We dispersed around the room as we knew several other couples who were there. If you dance well enough, you'll meet some really nice people. One couple was an old college friend, Fred Abbott, and his wife Brenda. I stopped to talk to them as Abby and the others walked to our table. I was about to join my wife when the music started, 
but then a noise was heard at the door. A crowd gathered at the entrance and then parted. Brenda gasped. What's wrong? asked Fred. Don't you know who it is? Brenda held her breath. I looked back and saw an extremely handsome man. He was only about 5 feet 6 inches or 7 inch, but as the women would say, he was gorgeous. Both Fred and I expressed our ignorance. This is Brad Talbot, she blurted out. He and his fiancée, Rita Summers, are two of the hottest stars in Hollywood. Oh yeah, Fred said and started looking past Brad. I wonder if Rita Summers is here too. John, on a scale of 1 to 10, Rita is at least 15, Brenda playfully slapped her husband's arm. Dream about it. When I looked at Brad, I really recognized him. He was one of my wife's favorite actors. I was wondering if I could get her an autograph, but what happened completely stunned me. Brad came straight to our table and asked my wife to dance. Without hesitation, she jumped up and danced with him for the next four songs. I walked over to the table and sat down, completely furious. My wife didn't even ask me if I was okay with her dancing with someone else. When the fifth song started, I wanted to intervene, but Chad's glass fell to the floor as he reached to pick up the broken glass. John, could you help me with this? He asked. I looked at my dancing wife and then at Chad. I should have just gone to my wife, but instead, I followed Chad into the men's room. However, when I got there, the cut was very minor. However, I helped him clean it and bandage it with a paper towel. When I returned to the table, I only caught a glimpse of my wife leaving with Brad. I rushed after them, Chad following closely behind me. As we walked out the front door into the parking lot, I saw Abby getting into the car with Brad. I ran to catch up with the car the moment I saw Brad kiss Abby's hand while she was laughing at something he said. Chad kicked my legs. I fell to the ground but got up in an instant. What the hell did you do? I yelled. Brad is just going to take your wife for a ride, he said with a grin. Thelma appeared a few seconds later. This is Abby's dream date, she told Chad and me. How much she liked Brad, so we agreed that he would ask her out. This is my wife. I screamed. Didn't you think I should know about this? Abby told us you would say no, Chad said with a grin. Just go with the flow. You go with this flow yourself. I shouted, pouncing and punching Chad right in the bridge of his nose. The sound of his nose shattering was the only good thing that night. Thelma then rushed at me, throwing punches and trying to kick me. Luckily for me, Fred saw what was happening and followed me. He quickly pulled Thelma away and sat her on the other side of him. He attacked my husband. Thelma started screaming. No, he didn't do it, Fred said calmly. You two attacked him first. He was just defending himself. Thelma became enraged and called 911. The police arrived about 10 minutes later and began taking statements. Fred continued his story, and I told the same thing, adding that Chad hit me in the legs first. The people who gathered after the riots began saw only Thelma attack me. They told the officers that all they saw was me just trying to get away from her. Chad and Thelma were eventually arrested. By the time the police left, I was devastated. I returned to our table and saw two women smiling. Where is everyone else? Helen asked. Chad and Thelma were arrested for assaulting me, I replied, trying my best to contain my anger. Abby left with Brad and seemed very happy about it. This shouldn't have happened, Anna said. She just had to go outside with Brad, take a few pictures, and then go back to the table. My wife and Thelma obviously didn't tell you what the real plan was, I said, getting up to get a drink. Fred caught up with me at the bar. Are you going to be okay? He asked. I don't know what the hell is going on, I admitted. I hope my wife just went for a drive with this movie star and comes back soon. When she returns, we will have a very unfriendly conversation. Look, John, Fred said concernedly, I don't want to start a fire, but Brenda told me that Brad Talbot is a notorious womanizer. He seems to enjoy sleeping with married women. I hope this doesn't apply to Abby, but I think you should prepare for the worst. My heart sank. I didn't know what to do, but I told Fred I'd be fine before returning to the table. I tried calling Abby on her cell phone. The call immediately went to voicemail. 
the atmosphere was very off awkward when I sat down. The wives looked very ashamed, and their husbands looked furious. I continued to try and reach Abby without success. Finally, two other couples said they were going back to the hotel. I told them I would stay for a while to see if Abby would come back. I waited half an hour before heading to the hotel. I waited there until 3 o'clock in the morning, calling Abby's phone every 10 minutes. Finally, in disgust, I checked out and headed home. I got there around 4 o'clock and sat on the sofa. I must have fallen asleep because the sun shining through our bay window woke me up. It was already 7 o'clock in the morning. I checked our bedroom, but Abby had not returned yet. Then I checked my cell phone, and there were no messages from Abby, so I logged into my computer and opened our Facebook page. It exploded with pictures of Brad and Abby leaving a nightclub, pictures of them walking into his house, pictures of Abby walking into Brad's house on his arm. I searched Hollywood websites, and they were all blown up by Brad's latest conquest with a married woman. At this moment, I was beside myself with rage. I immediately called my lawyer, and since it was Saturday, my call was forwarded to his home. He wasn't too happy about my call until I explained what was going on. He convinced me not to do anything until Abby came home and explained her behavior. Finally, around 11 o'clock, the front door opened, and Abby walked in with a big smile on her face. The smile disappeared when she saw the expression on my face. We didn't do anything, Abby said immediately. We just spent the night talking. I know I should have asked you, but I was sure you would say no. You know how much I love movies, and that Brad Tallett is one of my favorite actors. Last night was like a fairy tale. Nothing happened, John. I still love you with all my heart. I just stared at her, and I could almost feel the steam coming out of my ears. I want you to pack up your things and go to your parents. I can't even look at you right now. John, why do you make such a big deal about this? She asked with irritation and slight fear in her voice. We were just talking. There was nothing special about it. It doesn't really matter. This is damn important to me, I said through clenched teeth. I don't believe for a second that nothing happened. But for the sake of argument, let's pretend nothing happened. You still embarrassed me in front of the whole world. Now you're just being overdramatic, John, Abby said, putting her hands on her hips. Outside our group, no one knows anything, and Helen and Anna know that for me. It was just a harmless adventure. You stupid. I snapped, which made Abby recoil. I'd never talked to her like that before. This is the top story on all Hollywood news sites. They have pictures of you and Brad leaving the nightclub, heading to his house, and by now, they probably have pictures of you leaving his house this morning. I think our marriage is over. So get your stuff together and get out before I do something I'll regret. Please, John, I'm sure you're exaggerating. Abby was now on the verge of tears. I love you with all my heart. Sorry if I upset you, but nothing happened. I knew you'd be annoyed, but I thought you'd give me a pass when you found out nothing happened. We have to deal with this, then about the girls. You weren't thinking about your girls when you ran off into the night with your movie star idiot. I hissed at her. Would you like Stacy or Gail to do something similar when they become adults? Abby turned pale at these comments and then burst into tears. I'm so, so sorry, John. I didn't think it would be so important. I made a mistake. Please forgive me. You're right, you didn't think I was beside myself and getting angrier every minute. I had to get Abby out of the house before I did something I truly regretted. So I left her standing in the hallway and headed to our bedroom. I pulled a suitcase out of the closet and started throwing Abby's clothes into it. I'll do it, Abby said through sobs after a few minutes. She then slowly packed her suitcase and carried it downstairs. I didn't even offer to help her carry it. I waited until she was out the front door before I slammed it shut. I looked out the window to make sure she was gone. I saw her put her bag in the trunk and sit in the driver's seat. Then she lowered her head to the steering wheel and began to sob. I didn't even want to go out and console her. I was too damn angry. About 20 minutes later, she started the car and drove away. I immediately called my parents and explained to them what happened. I asked if they would keep the girls a little longer and if Abby shows up, tell her I have them. They agreed. I was then left to contemplate the ruins of my marriage. 
I started going over it all back and forth in my head. Abby insisted that nothing happened. Could this be true? I didn't know, but my gut told me she was lying. Can I accept what she did and try to move on? If, as she believed, no one knew about it except our friends, maybe. Now that it went viral, I didn't see any way forward for our marriage. I desperately wanted revenge on both of them, but I couldn't think of anything to achieve it. I cried for at least an hour, banging on the walls and doors as I walked around the house. I felt so powerless. I knew I couldn't get back at Brad, he was a Hollywood hotshot, and there was no way I could touch him. And I knew the divorce would hurt me financially, but if it came to that, I was prepared to work from home and sue for full custody of the girls. Since I was obviously the more stable of the two parents, I felt like I had a great shot at it. Around one o'clock in the afternoon, I was just making more coffee when the phone rang. Until now, the media had not received my phone number, but I knew that this would not last long. Hello, I answered the call. This is John Sawyer, and your wife's name is Abby, a female voice asked. Listen, I snapped, I'm not in the mood to talk to reporters. There was a quiet giggle, a bit like the ringing of bells. Okay, said the voice, I hate talking to them too. Who is this? I asked, fully prepared to hang up. My name is Rita Sewers, she answered quietly. I think you've already met my fiancé, Brad Talbot. Yes, I know this idiot, I replied. I didn't know where this conversation was going, but I wanted to end it as quickly as possible. Do you love your wife? asked Rita. Her question puzzled me. I sighed, despite everything my wife has done, I still love her. However, after everything that has happened, I don't think there is any chance of saving our marriage. I just can't come to terms with what she did. If I could offer you a way to hopefully save your marriage and also save my relationship with Brad, would you be interested? My heart began to beat unevenly. I had to sit down and think. Finally, I answered, yes, I would love to save my marriage, but I just don't see any way to do it. There was another quiet chuckle followed by a sigh. I've loved Brad for a long time. We have known each other since childhood. He comes from a very dysfunctional family, like me. His father was a womanizer, and as a result, his mother hated all men. She showed Brad absolutely no love, nothing he did ever made his mother happy. He had slept with married women many times before. I think this is Brad trying to get the love his mother never gave him. In any case, I come from the same dysfunctional family. Only in my family, my mother was a drunkard, and my father abused me. Brad was all I had back then, and I loved him to the core. But then he left when his mother divorced his father. I cried for weeks. We reconnected in Hollywood after we both became famous. I had heard stories about Brad and was very wary of getting into a relationship with him. But as soon as we saw each other, we fell in love again. And when we got engaged, he promised me that relationships with married women were left behind. When I asked him about your wife, he stated that nothing had happened. I have no way of proving it one way or the other, but right now, the thought of losing Brad is driving me crazy. Yes, my wife also told me that nothing happened, I admitted, and the thought of losing her drives me crazy too. Do you believe her? No, I don't know, and I don't know either. I know Brad and it would be completely out of character for him to bring a woman into his home and do nothing. But I suppose stranger things have happened. However, I am operating under the assumption that something actually happened. So I want him to understand the pain he caused me, and I want your wife to understand the same. I don't know if it will be enough, but I hope that if we succeed, we can move forward with our couples. I'm with you for now, I said. How are you going to achieve this? I'm not going to do this alone. We'll do it together, Rita replied. You'll have to spell it out because I don't see how I can do anything. First things first, she said, to get the most out of what I want to do, I need you to slowly open a dialogue with your wife towards a possible reconciliation. I'm going to do the same with Brad. I'm not talking to him right now. I'd say in two to three weeks, I'll start talking to Brad, and you should let your wife move in with you around the same time. I'll let you know when. You will still keep your distance, and you should not sleep with her. Why would I let her back into the house? I asked. 
because as soon as she gets home, we will have dinner together, and I will explain my plan. I still have some parts of my plan that I want to think about, Rita explained. I still wasn't sure about it, but I didn't have any ideas, so I decided to go with it. The first thing I did was call my parents and tell them that I would pick up the girls in half an hour. I then called my administrative assistant, Joni, and told her that I would be working from home for the next week or so. I could tell from her voice that she already knew the story about Brad and my Abby. She was very helpful and told me to let her know if there was anything she could do to help. Finally, I called Abby's parents at home. Abby's father answered the phone and was very apologetic. He had seen some of the reports on the news and was ashamed. But he was extremely relieved when I asked to speak to Abby. She burst into tears over the phone, saying how sorry she was and how she wanted to come home so we could talk about it. Listen, Abby, I said calmly, I think it would be good for us to be apart for a while. Next week, I'm going to work from home. You will have to work from Monday to Wednesday. Why don't you pick up the girls on Wednesday night, then we'll talk about everything. I plan to pick up the girls on Sunday evening. Please, John, she cried, I want to go home now. I want us to be a family again. You don't want us to be a family anymore. I thought we were family, I said sadly, but then you made me doubt everything I thought we had. I'll see you on Wednesday evening, say around five. I picked up the girls and told them that mom would be spending a few days with their grandparents. They had a lot of questions about why, but the topic dropped when we headed to McDonald's. The girls ran around playing games for two or three hours, and then we had dinner there. The phone rang just as we got home. I looked at the caller ID but didn't recognize it. When I responded, the reporter asked me if I wanted to comment on my wife's affair with Brad Talbot. I hung up the phone after that. The phone rang every five minutes. I finally got off the hook and just left him around six. My cell phone rang. It was Abby. Why don't you answer phone calls? She immediately demanded. Because they were just reporters who wanted me to comment on your affair with Brad Talbot. There's no romance, Abby growled. I told you nothing happened. Well, then you need to tell the rest of the world about it because, for some reason, they don't believe it, I said sarcastically. There was dead silence on the other end of the line. Abby then asked if she could talk to the girls, so I put them on the line and sat down, listening to that side of the conversation. They chatted about their day at McDonald's. Finally, Stacy handed me the phone and told me that my mom wanted to talk to me. Abby again begged to be allowed to return home. I told her I needed more time. On Wednesday night, Abby was there around four instead of five. I was a little annoyed that she had ignored my instructions, but I decided to leave everything as it is. The girls were happy to see her, and Abby showered them with kisses. When she came towards me to kiss me, I backed away. She looked at me with pain and irritation. So, this is how it will be now, she said irritably. If that's the case, maybe I should just take the girls and leave. If that's what you want to do, I said calmly and walked away. No, John, Abby said quickly, with slight panic in her voice. I think we should sit down and talk about our problems. The girls went to pack their overnight bags because Abby told them they would be visiting their grandparents. What are we going to do? Abby asked after an awkward silence. I wish I knew, I replied. Right now, I am hurt, humiliated, and angry. Any suggestions on how I can get rid of the big three? All I can do is apologize, Abby said, shaking slightly. I made a huge mistake. Please, please forgive me. I do not want to lose you, Abby. It's not that simple, I said, leaning back and crossing my arms over my chest. The whole world looks at me like I'm a cuckold. My wife cheated on me, and I didn't do anything about it. I never wanted to hurt you, Abby cried. I was so excited to meet Brad Talbot and see his home. I knew you'd be a little annoyed with me, but I never thought it would turn out to be such a mess. Abby, I want you to know that I sincerely hope that we can find a way through this, I said, and her face brightened for a moment. But I also want you to know that I have consulted with an attorney. If this turns into a divorce, I want you to know that I will seek full custody of the girls. I think you should hire your own lawyer. I don't want a divorce, she cried, and I won't let you take my girls from me. 
Abby, I'm not saying we'll get divorced, but I think we need to think about the worst case scenario, I said, and I'm not trying to hurt you, I lied. But I think you need to keep in mind that with your recent notoriety, the court may look very favorably on my petition for custody. Please don't do this, Abby begged. I will do everything so that we can be together again. Why don't we just continue talking? I suggested. In fact, why don't we have lunch next Sunday when you hand the girls over to me? Suppose I decide to keep the girls with me, she said with a flash of anger in her voice. I don't like passing them back and forth. I don't think it's good for them. If you do this, then I will have no choice but to begin divorce proceedings immediately. And remember, it was you who tarnished your name. I believe that the court will not look favorably on an adulteress as a mother of impressionable girls, I warned. At that moment, all the fight drained out of Abby. I will not do it. I don't want a divorce. At the beginning of the second week, I returned to my office. My assistants were very sympathetic to this. Some of my clients, not so many, two in particular, thought it was really funny and started making fun of me. I politely asked them to drop the topic, but they continued to tease me. I've had enough. I told them I was ending our relationship and transferring their portfolios to another office. Even though they both tried to apologize, I told them that our relationship was over. Word got back to my clients, and there was no more talk about my wife and Brad. Around 2 o'clock in the afternoon, Rita called me. Do you have plans for tonight? She asked. When I made it clear that no, I didn't, she said, good, because you're having dinner with me at the Zoom Zoom restaurant at 7. Tie and jacket required, then she hung up. I was a little surprised when Rita told me she had a reservation at Zoom Zoom. This is the most exclusive restaurant in the city. It usually takes a year to book and is incredibly expensive. I arrived at 7 o'clock and was directed to a private room at the back of the restaurant. There was only a table for two, but the room was quite luxuriously furnished. There was even a velvet couch. Scenes of possible activities that took place on this piece of furniture flashed through my mind. About five minutes later, the door opened and I saw Rita Summers enter. When I jumped to my feet, I realized that she was literally taking my breath away. I had no doubt that the restaurant would have come to a complete stop when Rita entered. I figured she was about five feet four inches or so. She had long blonde hair, soft brown eyes, and a figure that drove you crazy. But it was her smile that attracted you. For the life of me, I couldn't imagine why Brad would cheat on a woman like that. Can I call you John? She asked, sitting down opposite me. I nodded and asked, how should I contact you, Rita? Of course, this gentle giggle made me smile. We ordered drinks and sat for a while, talking. I told Rita a little about my job, but mostly I told her funny stories about my girls or me when I was an awkward teenager. The waiter then returned and took our order. I didn't want to pressure Rita, but I was eager to find out what her plan was. I didn't mind saving my marriage, but I had no idea how to do it. When we finished eating, she leaned back in her chair. First of all, John, Rita said with a sad smile, that sneaky snake Chad Tompkins organized this whole mess. He fancies himself a film agent, but in reality, he is nothing more than a pimp. He sets up gullible men and women to be taken advantage of by movie stars. You wouldn't believe how many people, especially married women, get into bed with movie stars with Chad's help. You're talking to someone who knows this firsthand, I said with a growl. However, I didn't know what exactly Chad's job was. At least I was able to beat him up, really. Rita's eyes sparkled. It's good news, but you really shouldn't be too harsh on your wife. I believe Brad could charm Mother Teresa by removing her panties. As you already know, your wife is not the first married woman to fall under his spell. But I intend to make her the last, and if I can't do that, then what I'm offering will at least repay him and your wife for the pain they caused us. I cannot promise that once my plan is completed, either of us will still be with our loved ones. However, despite this, we will feel the satisfaction of having avenged their betrayal and lies. I was somewhat taken aback by Rita's willingness to cut my wife some slack, but I was very happy to hear that there would be some kind of payback. Now I just wanted her to tell me how we were going to do it. What exactly are you proposing? I asked. Before I get into the details, 
I just want to say that you are an extremely handsome man and you are also very charming. I think your wife was a fool for jeopardizing your marriage. If we met under different circumstances, I would be very interested in dating you. That's very kind of you, but we both know that we are traveling in completely different worlds. And you are not just stunning, but even more than that, you are incredibly beautiful. You are very kind. You're right about our two different worlds, of course, but that doesn't change the fact that I find you very attractive. Thank you is all I could think of to say because I wanted to know the plan. So, what are we going to do next? Within the next two weeks, I intend to become your client, Rita said. I'm sorry, I do not understand, client. Yes, you do offer financial advice to your clients, don't you? Rita said with a grin. Yes, sure, I said, still not understanding where she was going with this. Then I intend to invest some money, she said simply. However, we will have to have three or four meetings to discuss the agreements. I think four would be the ideal number. Two of these meetings will take place in your office, and two will be lunch meetings. I'll choose the seats myself. Okay, I said, still not sure why I was going to do this. I can open an account, but you have to invest at least $10,000. Oh, I intend to invest much more than that, she said, smiling wider. In the meantime, you won't tell your wife that I'm your client. You will continue to meet with her and discuss reconciliation. In two weeks, you will let her move home, but you will not sleep with her. On the 15th of October, you and your wife will be attending a gala evening, which is of decisive importance. This will be an evening for the charity that I helped found and have been working with for five years. Most people don't associate charity with me, and I like that. I attend charity events every two years. I wouldn't have attended this year because I was at the last gala, however, I will be there, and you and your wife will be there too. Okay, I'll be with you at the charity gala, I said. I know for sure that tickets to this event cost $20,000 each. I can't justify spending that kind of money. Rita giggled again, then smiled. The tingling sensation went from the top of my head to the tips of my toes. Your tickets will be free. You just tell your wife that a client gave them to you. I still don't understand how this achieves anything, I said, now starting to get upset. Well, you see, John, part of the night's entertainment is the escort auction. Escort auction? Not that kind of escort, she giggled again. We sell willing men at auction to the women present. The woman or man who will pay the most for a particular person will put a sort of slave collar on him. Then the men are at the mercy of the women who paid for them, Rita said with a laugh before continuing. Most of them are bachelors, but married men expose themselves so that their wives can bid on them. Sometimes a married man is bought by someone other than his wife. I assume these married men are on their best behavior because otherwise, their wives would cut off their genitals. However, at this year's gala, one married man will be auctioned off, and his wife will not win the bid. And what happens after will not be innocent. There was still a look of confusion on my face. Rita laughed and patted my hand. You are a married man who will be put up for auction, and I'm the one who will have the winning bid. So, you just need to rent a tuxedo, buy your wife a new dress, and be my guest. It suddenly dawned on me what Rita had planned, and it was brilliant. Both Brad and Abby were going to feel what it was like for us. Of course, I knew it was all for show. But just spending the night with Rita Summers while everyone assumed the worst might happen would go a long way toward balancing the scales. That would take the cuckold horns off me and put them on Brad. Besides, my wife would feel the same pain and humiliation that I did. Then maybe we could meet with a counselor and put this all behind us. The next few weeks flew by very quickly. I have to say that the first time Rita walked into my office, I thought all the girls there were going to pee their pants. Our lunch meetings took place in very private restaurants. I didn't understand why we held these meetings in secret, everything important could be discussed in my office. Most of the time, we just told each other stories. These were fun lunches, and I learned a lot about Rita and Brad. She really loved him, and she would be devastated if they broke up, but she was willing to leave him if he was going to continue his old behavior. A week before the gala, I allowed Abby to come home. However, I told her that I would sleep in the guest room. She was in pain, but she did not insist. 
The Wednesday before the gala, I came home with the tickets, and Abby's eyes lit up. She started ranting about all the celebrities that would be there. Then she scolded me for spending that amount of money. It didn't cost me anything, I told her. One of my clients asked me if I could use the tickets. I thought it would be a fun evening. By the way, I think you should buy a new dress, buy something. Abby was floating in the clouds. I almost felt sorry for her, but then I remembered that evening when I thought it would be a magical night for the two of us, only to look like a fool. It's time for her to feel my pain. When we arrived, we found that there were already about 500 people there. When we checked in, there was a table where you could sign up for the auction. I saw a line of men filling out forms. There were five really handsome men in line. So, I turned to Abby. What do you say, Abby? I asked innocently, pointing to the table. This is a charity, and we didn't pay anything for the tickets. What do you say if I sign up, and you can bid on me? Abby giggled, but it wasn't nearly as musical as Rita's. I don't have any money, and I didn't even take my wallet with me because it wouldn't fit in this bag, as per Rita's suggestion, I had cash with me. Here's $1,000. I doubt you'll have to pay more than that. But it's a charity, so offer at least $200. You're worth $11,000 and much, much more, Abby said with a wide smile. I stood in line, and when I got to the registration table, I filled out the form and signed it. I looked at the list, and there were about 18 or 20 guys signed up. If I didn't know it was a setup, I would never have had the courage to do it. Just as I was about to turn away, the woman behind the counter asked, Are you married? I nodded, and she pulled out another form. I hope your wife is with you, otherwise, you won't be able to take part. She needs to fill out this form and sign it. I called Abby over and explained what they wanted. She quickly filled out the form. What Abby didn't realize because she didn't read the form was that she agreed to let me do whatever the winning bidder asked. After the paperwork was completed, we went in search of our table. Rita seated us at a table with two starlets, one TV presenter, and two actors in a national soap opera. My wife had stars in her eyes, not only from the people at our table but also from the other celebrities at the gala. When the auction began, all the men who offered themselves were called. I smiled at my wife and stood up. As it turned out, there were 24 participants, and I'm sure that it was Rita's intention that they left me for last. By the time I was the last one on stage, they had already raised over $300,000. And I have to admit that the bidding was lively and fun. Our last contestant is a local, said the announcer, a well-known game show host. His name is John Sawyer, and he is married with two children. I'm sure his wife is emptying out her piggy bank somewhere in there. So. What do you say if we start the bidding at $50? I think it's worth at least a hundred, shouted an elderly woman in front. Can you wash dishes, honey? I laughed and shouted back, I can wash and dry. This caused loud laughter from the crowd. This is more than my husband can do, exclaimed another elderly woman. I'll give you $200. Then it became $500. Finally, I heard Abby shout, I'll give you $1,000. This caused everyone to rejoice, but almost immediately, the younger woman offered $2,000. Before I knew it, the bid had risen to $5,000. I looked at Abby, and she was looking around completely confused. I just shrugged, looking at her. An offer of $10,000 came from the back of the room. This was quickly followed by another for $15,000. If I hadn't known that it was all a setup, I might have gotten a headache, the bid reached $25,000, and I began to get a little nervous. I thought a few thousand would seal the deal, it was much more than I expected. Finally, from the far end of the room, I heard Rita's voice. I bet $100,000. There was a stunned silence, not only because of the amount but also because of who had placed the bet. Rita Summers walked down to just below the stage as the crowd roared. She smiled at me. She turned to the crowd and said, and I don't even care if he knows how to wash dishes. Roars and cheers were heard again in the room. I must admit that I blushed a lot. Rita came up, put a traditional collar around my neck, and kissed me tenderly on the lips from the stage. By prior arrangement, we returned to where Abby was sitting. She was stunned, she didn't know what to do or say. 
So, I shrugged and said, well, I didn't plan this, Abby, but don't worry, it probably won't happen. Here are the car keys. As far as I understand the rules, I am Miss Summer's thing for the next 12 hours, maybe longer. See you at home tomorrow. Rita and I danced several dances at the gala evening. During these dances, she kept bidding my ear. I saw Abby watching us with that deer-in-the-headlights look. When Rita took my arm and pressed her chest against me, walked out of the ballroom with me, I saw Abby's lips tremble. After the gala, Rita took me in a limousine to another nightclub. We danced and talked there for an hour. After that, we went to a private screening of the new film. There was no one in the theater except Hollywood A-list people. The movie, I thought, was crap. Rita thought so too, but when we talked to the director, we were both delighted with him. The limousine then took us to a very seedy part of town. After the car was parked, I noticed that there were two cars parked behind us. Rita explained that they were part of her security team. She pointed to two dilapidated houses on opposite sides of the street. The one with the porch light still on was once my home. Brad lived in the house across the street. It wasn't such a bad area back then, but it was still pretty seedy. It was already about 3 o'clock in the morning when we finally reached Rita's apartment. She explained that she has six apartments, one in Hollywood, one in New York, one in Florida, two in Europe, and one in South America. This particular apartment was three stories tall and could fit two regular-sized houses. We entered the office, and Rita poured me a drink. Sitting on the sofa, I started laughing. It's a pity that I didn't have a camera to take a picture of Abby. I almost feel guilty for doing this, but not really. Rita sat very close to me and put her hand on my knee. John, tell me honestly, did your wife convince you that nothing happened? None of us will ever be able to prove it, but I believe they had intim, I said sadly. That's why it still hurts so much. I know, John, and I'm 99.9% .9 sure that Brad had a night with your wife, Rita said angrily at the thought. I think this twist is fair game. With these words, Rita leaned over and kissed me tenderly. I was taken aback by this offer. I just assumed that we would go to Rita's house and sleep in separate rooms. Everyone would believe that we slept together, but we would know the truth. Now she was offering herself to me. It didn't take me long to make a decision. I suppose if I were a better person, I would refuse, but I was still hurt by what my wife did. Plus, who in their right mind would turn down the chance to sleep with Rita Summers? We kissed on the couch for about 20 minutes. It was intoxicating to be so close to such an incredibly beautiful woman. Finally, she took my hand and led me to her bedroom. Once inside, Rita began a slow strip tease. It was hard from the first kiss. I wish Abby would do something like that to me. I would love to wake up like this sometimes. After Rita brought me to the finish line, we made love again. Then I looked at my watch and realized that it was almost 11 o'clock. I should have been home by now, I said. Rita laughed at my crazy expression. Remember, your wife didn't worry when you were waiting for her at home. And remember, nothing happened. I laughed, and we took a shower together. After drying off and getting dressed, Rita prepared eggs for me while she waited for the limousine to come pick me up. On the way home, I finally found peace. If Abby had wanted to, I felt like we could now work on putting everything behind us. When I walked into our house, I found Abby crying in the living room. I wasn't sure you'd come home, she said miserably. The news is a buzz that Rita Summers paid $100,000 to spend a night with you. At first, I thought it was just payback, but then I saw the way she looked at you. If she spent that much, she must really care about you. But I don't blame you for what you did. Do we have any future? First of all, Abby, I lied. Nothing happened, I said. She looked at me, almost with anger in her eyes, but then it disappeared. Really? Rita is my new client, I told my wife. She felt it was fair considering what Brad did to me. Besides, Rita is the one who gave me the tickets. She typically makes anonymous donations of $100,000 each year. This year, Rita made it public to send a message to her fiancé. So you're right, it was to repay Brad. Whether we have a future or not is entirely up to you. 
If you're ready to work on our marriage and go to counseling, I'm ready too. Abby ran into my arms, and I kissed her deeply. Then I took her to our bedroom. I don't know where I found the strength, but we made love twice. I then went back to sleep until my two girls pounced on me around 2 p.m. We had a quiet dinner with the girls, and after they went to bed, Abby and I sat on our patio holding hands. I knew then that we could put the pieces of our marriage back together. Abby and I found a good counselor, Wendy, and she was very helpful in solving our problems. Surprisingly, Wendy was much stricter towards Abby. I assumed that since she was a woman, she would be more sympathetic to my wife. But she pointed out that Abby was planning to take time away from her marriage while I wasn't planning on it. Even though we both insisted that nothing happened, I don't think Wendy believed either of us. Despite this, she said that the simple fact that we chose to leave our spouses with someone was a betrayal. Abby blushed deeply at most of it. Of course, Wendy gave me a pass of sorts because she basically saw my night as Rita's revenge on her fiancé. This was true, of course, but what Wendy didn't know was that I was up to my neck in planning and executing it. However, the sessions were very useful. There is one side effect to all this fuss. Abby doesn't like going to the movies anymore. She doesn't even like to watch movies on TV. However, she will go with the girls if they want to go to any children's movie. As for Chad and Thelma, I have dropped the charges against Thelma. I told the authorities that she thought she was protecting her husband, but I allowed the accusations to be made against Chad. He received three months in the county detention center. Chad and Thelma were kicked out of our group, and Abby no longer speaks to Thelma. They had a big fight because Abby blames Thelma for almost ruining our marriage. I won't say that I understand my wife's logic. Rita and Brad got married in the so-called wedding of the century. There were more than a thousand guests there. If you weren't invited, you were nobody in Hollywood. In case you were wondering, Abby and I didn't receive an invitation. However, I did send Brad a wedding gift. I bought a pair of bull horns and sent them to him with a note that read, You leave my wife alone and I will leave yours alone. I was still mad at Brad when I sent the antlers, but Rita told me that Brad thought the gift was hilarious. He hung them in his office with a framed note underneath. However, since Hollywood is Hollywood, the marriage lasted barely a year. True to her word, when Rita discovered that Brad was again chasing married women, she divorced him. It was friendly, and they are still friends. It's a shame because I know Rita loved him deeply from what she told me about their relationship over the years. I know that they truly had a connection that was much deeper than most couples. But obviously, this was not enough. And yes, Rita is still my client. When we opened her account, she deposited $1 million. I fully expected her to close the account as soon as her planned revenge was completed, but Rita left it with me. When the amount grew to $1.5 million, she contributed another $2 million. I haven't seen her in person since the day after the gala, but I talk to her at least four times a year to discuss her investments. Sometimes she calls with a question about her account, but sometimes she calls just to talk. I enjoy these conversations the most. Rita is a very savvy businesswoman. Surprisingly, she is also quite conservative, at least in her investments. I have no idea what her policy is. Even when I update Rita's portfolio quarterly, we go through her account in about 20 minutes and then spend the next hour or two talking about our lives. After Rita divorced Brad, she told me that she should have left me and left Brad. I laughed and reminded her that we lived in two different worlds. Since then, Rita has been teasing me about keeping an eye on me. And it's her supposed plan that if the stars ever line up so that I'm lonely and she decides to quit playing, she'll do whatever it takes to get me. I know she's just joking, but it's a good fantasy that I keep in the back of my mind. Abby and I are approaching our 10th wedding anniversary. We've had a few rough patches, but overall, it's been a great marriage so far. Looking back, I am convinced that if Rita had not come to my rescue, I would have divorced Abby, and today, I cannot imagine what life would be like without her. Oh yes, and one last thing, Abby is pregnant, and we are having a little boy. I can hardly wait for this. What do you think of our story today? As far as I'm concerned, the wife is completely wrong for going out with her favorite actor without telling her husband and because of that their marriage broke up for a while. What's your opinion? Write in the comments. 
See you in the next video.